up and all that sort of thing and running? Did you run like this? Did yeah. you power run? Through the red lights. There's a difference between just running and power running. I was going so fast, I decided, am I going in the right direction? So I asked the cabbie, yeah, is this west? He goes, yep. So I just okay. kept zooming and I just saw the zooming. slope. And I said, oh, there it is. Like the slope down to m and Okay, very good. And it's so good. Glad you got here. We're going to get it in. And welcome. Welcome very much to Conversations. A pleasure to welcome to the program a dear friend of myself and Conversations and the world, I would say. That's Bob Dobbs, and he's got himself pegged now as a paramedia ecologist, which is an interesting way, and I think what it is is shorthand for saying he's very, he's very concerned with things in a very comprehensive mode and way of thinking of understanding humanity and technological extensions thereof and so forth. And Bob, is so good to see you again for the umpteenth time. We've done so many programs. The last one was when the film was coming out, with Robin Williams, who was Man of the Year, Man of the Year, which got awful reviews and everything. But the idea was that a talk show host from a comedy channel or something uh, was made president, which was a very interesting theme. My scenario that I had predicted and acted out in uh, Toronto in 1988. Really, you'd done the you'd on the radio. Act, acted out the scenario. Yeah, right. Of a talk I show. I claimed host. the computers rigged the situation so that I could become chairperson of the Secret Council of Ten. That was okay. in February 88. Okay, we're going to get to the Secret Council yeah. of Ten because that's a very interesting concept and that Secret Council of Ten are the dudes what run the world? Yep. Is that about it? You've got some sort of everyone we can it's talk It's a complex about form of running the world. It's okay. paramedia in technique. Yeah, why do you say paramedia? What are you referring to? And uh, let's keep Council of Ten in yep. our mind. Okay. Yep. We'll head towards that. Tell us about what you mean by paramedia. Well, if you ecologist. If you read uh, McLuhan's Understanding Media, which mm -hmm. came out in 1964, he inventories 26 media, and each one's a category. The printed book, the spoken word, the typewriter, the phonograph, the telephone. Mm -hmm. Separate media creating separate environments. Once we've had the digital era over the last 10 years, your cell phone contains television, radio, newspapers. Your iPhone contains the Internet. In other words, my phone is not something stuck in the wall and is a telephone per se. Mm -hmm. It's mixed media. So it's a seamless web of former McLuhan categories. Mm -hmm. Movie, TV, separate things. TV was a uh, chunk of furniture in your living room. Mm -hmm. Now, all media being seamless, so para means above, yeah. below, beside, inside, outside. It does. That's parachute. Yeah, parachute. Para, P A R A. Yeah. That's para. Is that para green? is a is a syllable that moves that implies paranormal. That's right. Uh, parallax. Yeah. Paradox. Parachute. Parachute. Mm -hmm. So paramedia means it's around the concept of the media. Now the media since the '60s is what everybody has been calling. Uh, the bugaboo. The media says this, the media does, this, does that, as if the media was some separate entity out there doing things to us. Most people probably meant the news or news vague. Actually, the media, this convergence that people talked about as if it was externalized, was what I call the android meme. And well, the wait a minute. You're going a little faster, if I may. You, you go paramedia ecologist. Right. So I'm talking about media, yeah. which I say, as it got more converged in the 90s, became what I call the android meme. You call that, and by Android meme, Android is like a robotic thing. Automatic self-replicating. Like or uh, like, a, a, yeah. a, a, like a genetic thing, only cultural. Cultural habit. Cultural habit that's passed, passed on. on. Like a yeah. gene right. in genetics, but a meme is like a cultural thing that's passed on. So Android impri implies a self-replicating, robotic, angelic turnover. Angelic? Yes. Yeah, so you, you, you put angelic on, does it, it couldn't be devilish? Oh, I don't mean uh, there's bad angels and good angels. Oh, wh I, why, right. angelic? why angelic? Because an angel can be anywhere it wants. Okay. It shows up and then goes somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, so with the uh, modern electronic media like the telephone, the cell phone, the iPhone, whoever you call, you're there. And, and then you call somewhere. When you use a telephone, yeah. the sender was sent. To whoever you called, and yeah. they're transported to you. So that's angelic. Uh -huh. Now, as it gets age at the same time, it's not just two way; it's multi way. Mm -hmm. Then you're a super angel, where you're everywhere at once, rather than going here and then there <coughs> and then another place. You're automatically everywhere at once. So I'm saying angel, but 
the robotic implies super angel. Oh, All right. Okay. So yeah, I, you need, we need to get some definitions and everything. Is that like what would be called the telecosm or no? Is yeah, that yeah, that's an approximation yeah. of that Gilder's concept, Gilder right? Gilder would yeah. say that. Yeah. The the point is, is that's the android meme. It's a super angelic, robotic, self-replicating apparatus. And that it's we also a state of political and social and and and, and cultural, organizational passed on ways of being. Yes. Ways of and thinking, varies, ways of perceiving. It varies with the technological extensions of the consciousness through time. Yes. Okay. Th they become collective apparatuses or thought forms or environments. But as you get... Environments. Okay. Environments. Yeah. But when you get into the digital era, they evaporate the TV as a separate piece of furniture. They evaporate the telephone as a what separate... What do you mean evaporate? It's not there. On, you don't have to go to the room where the TV set is. Because it's on your iPad. It's, it goes with you. Yeah. So it's miniaturized and evaporated. Right. And in that situation, the media as a category melts away. So para means you're... The uh, old media. Yeah, the old categories. And it becomes subsumed by the new emerging yeah. ones. So sounds e like, it sounds in economics like uh, Schumpeter. Yes. Creative entrepreneurialism yes, or something. Yeah. It would be good to bring it back to political re and economic reality. We're gonna, I'm going to yeah. do that. So the media word now means the android meme. It subconsciously was the reference from 1960 up to uh, last decade. Was that Dawkins ter ter coined that term, meme? He coined it in 1976 in his book, uh, The Selfish Gene. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. So media, for me, means android meme. But now, as the android meme shrinks and becomes seamless and almost uh, it's difficult to find its boundaries, yeah. it's inside you and you're moving around it with more autonomy. How did it get inside you? Uh, not instantiating or something. You don't mean literally. By like shrinking. By literally shrinking. goes inside. Well, they're going to have computers. They're going to be molecular. And I'm saying that's already happening with the android meme. The effects precede the causes. The actual molecular nanoform Television goes inside you. Now, with the little screen... You, you're talking awfully fast. Well, what do you mean television goes inside of you? I mean, well, the people are going to have a hard time understanding that. If you look at a... You go to the cinema and you see a movie. The projecting light used to hit off the screen and come back and go into your eye. That's right. So it bounced off. McLuhan oh. called it light off or uh -huh. light on. Uh -huh. Bouncing off. Mm -hmm. But the old television with the cathode ray tube would send beams into you and into your gut mm -hmm. and then you'd have to take the little pixels and remake an image. You actually mm -hmm. made the image because it just said dot, sent dots at you. Mm -hmm. So it goes through your eye into your central nervous system and you go inside the beam. So where are you on the beam? So the, the cathode ray beam, you might as well say you're, it's inside you as well as you being inside it. Uh -huh. The boundaries melt. That was McLuhan's definition. He said, with, yeah, let me just yeah, de sure. define pointed. Mm -hmm. So with the movie camera, the viewer is the camera when you're watching movies. Mm -hmm. But he said with television, the viewer is the screen. Mm -hmm. You are the screen. And where does the screen begin? Be it begins back inside the set with the cathode ray emanation, mm -hmm. radiation or beaming. Mm -hmm. So now you take that, but that looks like it's outside of you. Now, when you disappear, I don't have to have a box to look at a TV. I just press this little thing, my little iPhone, and there's the TV apparatus inside. Yeah, but you can't see it except on a little tiny yeah, screen. Yeah, you can't. You just see a screen. Yeah, but it's tiny. It's not very... very oh, you can see it. You develop eyes. Why I mean, couldn't you develop that into where there would be a connection and it would come up on the Zigfield screen? Well, that's why people buy these... Be, that'd be a big file transfer problem. That's why the, the popularity of these big high-definition plasma TVs that people buy. Right. They want to recover that TV, movie, cinematic experience, so they buy these big TV screens because they can't really accept the functionality of the little screen on their iPhone, but they will. Also, I've noticed as I get older, it's harder and harder for me to see something small like that. Yeah. Didn't they have eyeglasses that would just make it big or something? Well, so you didn't grow up with it. You, you have a certain eye distance natural to you from reading books, but yeah. young kids are right inside the thing. Yeah. They can see. They yeah. also use their thumb a lot with their cell phone. That's right, they're, they're tactile. They, they're very tactile with the thumb, yeah. I mean, McLuhan pointed out in Understanding Media that people's reading distance the baby boomers was getting closer and closer to the page really we, yeah back in the 60s yeah, yeah. yeah he had an optometrist friend uh, mm. investigate that and he knew it from his own profession this optometrist he was something else man well, let's not get distracted okay uh, the thing is that so the para mm. is the fact as these former telephone automobiles tv cinema these huge environments shrink down mm -hmm. it makes the user bigger 
I'm walking around my TV. I'm walking around. I'm existing around my telephone because it's all in around your cell phone. Yeah, because yeah. it's inside here. Mm -hmm. I had to walk over there to get the telephone before. Uh -huh. So this seamless web of the Android meme, the converged media, I call paramedia because uh -huh. you are above, below, and beyond it, I and and, see. and underneath and inside it. Uh -huh. So that's what the word paramedia means. Okay, when did you start using that in terms of what you do? After uh, about 2000, I think. A boot. 2000. A boot. A boot. A boot. You spent a, a little Canadian boot. time in Canada, I would assume. <laughs> a little yes. time in Canada, yes. Well, yes. That's because yes. it's cold up there. <laughs> yes. It, it, it <laughs> tightens yeah. your, uh, tighten lips. your lips. As you yes. go south, they go yeah. about. <laughs> they <laughs> loosen up their mouth that's as right. you go south. Yeah. It's a muscular yeah. thing yeah. in the weather. That's why yeah. Canadians say a boot. Yeah. You it's about 40 below. Yes, I know. It's cold. My daughter's in Minnesota now. Boy, it gets cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably has a little bit of O in there, Chief. Yeah, right. Right, right, that kind of thing. So that's really interesting. Android meme, is that, can you give a, ty a, a term in a zeitgeist kind of way to the operation of things historically on this planet Earth? The like, popular were, phrase, How long yes. were we in living in an android meme condition? When did it begin? What were we living in before that? What are we going, and maybe more significant, where the hell are we all going? <laughs> and where have we been? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll tell well, you where, where we've been. been. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's tell you where we've been. Where we've been. That's a good beginning, yeah. 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 When Sputnik went up in 57, 57 yeah. there's this apparatus. Then the Americans countered within a year mm -hmm. with their satellites, yeah. and then gradually the satellites started to rotate around the planet. Mm -hmm. So McLuhan said that satellite environment, which was a not notice really the effects of it environment, right? Not notice, it's always invisible, the new thing. It put the Na new thing is always invisible. And not noticed. It's effects. It might be noticed as a figure. Oh, Sputnik went up, but the effects of figure it. Figure and ground? Yes. Yeah. So the figure is Sputnik, and the ground is the effect of that on previous media. So what the happened? effect on previous media. Okay, yeah. yeah. So what happened to Earth that everybody thought they were living inside of? Earth was now, planet Earth was now inside another man-made, human-made environment. Uh -huh. So Earth became a divine image, an archetype, and ecology was born. So why did people be so unaware of industrial pollution, you know, back in the 40s, 30s, and the 19th century? Well, there wasn't and as much of it as there is. No, no, you look at London in the 19th century, it was more polluted than we are now. Yeah, but no, I mean, collectively. Collectively, you mean the whole world? Yeah. Yeah, but people weren't in touch with each other. Mm -hmm. But as they, in the first part of the 20th century, through radio, there was lots of pollution expanding in the oil consciousness world, mm -hmm. and so, uh, pe but people didn't complain about it. They might have, but it didn't become a public accepted assumption. It became an assumption after Rachel Carson, and then by the late se uh, late uh, 60s, Ecology and Earth Day shows up in 1970. I did, I did so a perceptual the, relationship to the image of Earth, the mm -hmm. natural artifact, natural habitat, was changed by satellite. Mm -hmm. But to move on, so the satellite is creating this ring of satellites and creating the planet it, and its former media like TV, radio, bulldozer ships, and whatever, uh, newspapers, they become the content of the satellite environment, so they become actors on the stage that the satellite environment created. So the actors in the 60s and 70s were the old media environment, separate media, newspaper, television, radio, architecture, skyscrapers, all media, all things that humans make. Mm. So, well, by the 1960, they started to, up in the MIT, to invent, invent the digital environment. And so from 1960 to 1990, the global theater of acting media forms mm -hmm. start to converge and get smaller. Okay? Converge and get smaller. Haven't got to the iPhone level, but it's starting to. In the 70s, you had VCRs. You could record programs. You didn't have to wa watch the program at the same time as everybody else. It was Peter Goldmark Sr. invented videotape. Before that, they only could do anything with what they call kinescope. Okay. It was film. Right. And then you had but the Walkman. Listening to your own cassette tapes when you yeah, want to. Yeah, that was to. a big deal. That was a big roll yeah. of the dice for Sony, and it went off like gangbusters. So there's the old radio, one-way broadcast medium, becoming custom-made for the individual. So the individual has more sense of autonomy in relation to uh, the older media. Now you're talking about the psychology of people as they walk yeah, around right. and everything. You're going to be in a, if you're in an environment, a media environment, you're going to have a certain sense of your own identity and so forth different as you move through time. Yeah, and as you get your own autonomy in terms you of what you can... You use the word ecology, and I studied geography and so forth, and I studied with a man who really brought, because ecology as a word has not been there mm. in much in the modern uh, That was an effect of Sputnik and satellite, well, created the popularity so, of ecology. So. The man who was given credit, he was a very famous geographer, maybe the most famous geographer in America, 
worked with Kroeber out of Berkeley and everything like that. But he more or less was, uh, he brought the, the, the word into the modern parlance. He, he, he re, from the old rag and bone shop, he right. got the word. You would know that because that's your field. Yeah. It I was your field. I known that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, McLuhan used to say ecology, it echoes logically. Yes. yes right? Yeah. Is yeah. that yeah. not McLuhan who said that? Yeah. Eco, echo. He would yeah. play with it. Uh -huh. What, uh, when did he invent this term? Uh, I don't know. Sure. 50s? Probably would have been in the 50s. Yeah. Or, there was would have been the 40s. He was older and he was very, very good. He was a real professor. Honest to God, professor there with a pipe. Right. And everything that would give a, a pronouncement. Gutenberg a man. Day. Gutenberg yeah, man. Yeah, well, Gutenberg <laughs> man, yeah. He wrote <laughs> definitive books and that kind of thing. You know, like professors, well, like when professors were right. professors. Well, McLuhan shows up in 1953 with his journal Explorations, but that very year, we in the Secret Council of Ten gave the oh. CIA the option to create and use that word, and they created the Human Ecology Foundation, which was an MK Ultra mind control operation. MK, op I don't know what MK Ultra mind control. LSD, uh, weird programming, hypnosis, a way to create zombie agents. You know the Manchurian Candidate scenario. Well, part of that project, secret project, was called the Human Ecology Group. And who was that run by? The the secret ostensibly Council? by the CIA, but we in the Secret Council of Ten gave it the go ahead. Might be worthwhile just asking in a certain offhand kind of way and in a casual way. <laughs> What the hell is the Secret Council of Ten? It might be worth mentioning, or does that take you off your running narrative? It fits right in, but okay, good. I just have another sentence so to say about where we were going with that. A sentence? Only one. Another sentence, no yes. No punctuation. Uh, yeah. it's well, it could on. be Finneganese. It, it could be, be yeah, run it on. Could be <laughs> it could be 628 <laughs> pages, on one sentence. Page. Yes, that's Six, right. Finning's Wake, one book. You're the only person I know who can quote that stuff yep, in, yep, in yep. length. But anyway. Yes. I am River Run Incarnate. Yeah. Oh, go on. <laughs> Don't go on with Joyce. But okay. One sentence. Okay. You got one sentence. So we have this shrink. The clock is ticking. We have this shrinking of the global media actors inside the satellite proscenium arch, okay? Around the planet. Arts, that's the word I was searching for right. in my head. As it, the effect of that interplay, that tactile interplay of the different environments. Tactile not being necessarily touched, but interval. Touching and letting go. Yeah, and also recognizing the, the, uh, the, the interval between. Yes, the yeah, yeah, that's the most important. It's like important. a sixth thing. The gap, that's yeah. right. Uh -huh. You could say it's a sixth sense, mm -hmm. the interplay sense. Yeah. But um, so as these global environments interplayed and shrunk, the effect of that was like a hologram. Mm -hmm. People were living in a converged image before the actual hologram showed up. So the hologram is what we're living in from 1960 to 1990. And the hologram is shrinking as the digital media gets more and more powerful. So the hologram has shrunk so much, it's gone inside us. And me, with my iPhone or whatever other modern gadget I have, I have autonomy and can play and mutate that, and I can edit that hologram. Yeah, Kurzweil is talking about instantiating. What's that uh, mean for instantiating him? Instantiating is uh, a way in which you can take a connection, let's say, to a human being and uh, connect it uh, to a computer and instantiate thought. That's non-tactile. You're connecting. Now, yeah, yeah, it's but no, he, he, he's talking about that because it's getting smaller. Everything. And right. they're talking about we're going to move beyond silicon. I don't know how long now that is, five, seven years, to carbon-60. Bucky Fullerene. It Buckminster Fullerene, and that's going to be the basis of information technology, and it's going to be molecular. All right, so what we learned from McLuhan is that's what we're going to lead into Secret Council I mean, 10. Getting, here's how we and get... He used to always say, here's how I mean, we, yep. he used to always say, we'll get to the Council 10. He used to always say, he had a couple things. Uh, one was a, a term ephemeralization, fuller now, not McLuhan. Doing more fuller. with less. Doing more with less through the elegance of design, and it's the, the Buckminster Fullerene Carbon 60 is the basis of virtually all nanotechnology, which is coming on like gangbusters. That's now. right. Also. I have to give uh, Bucky Fuller credit. Um, you know that he brought Ezra Pound out of his silence. I didn't know that. Yeah, Ezra Pound went into the silence after he was released from... Uh, St. Elizabeth, Elizabeth in Washington, he'd been charged with treason and high in, in jail for 13, 14 years. He, he was released because of popular uh, professors as saying that he wasn't insane and he, he had good was a good guy. Mussolini, so he I goes, think. yeah, so he yeah. goes back to Italy and uh, within a couple of years after walking around in a few fascist protests, he yeah. goes into the silence. Mm -hmm. And uh, he doesn't speak until he meets Bucky Fuller, and no. he goes to see a Bucky Fuller talk in Italy someplace. Wow, and he's so impressed, yes. so impressed. I think I'll start talking yeah, again. He yeah. thought Bucky Fuller was a great poet, and he, he said, was. he's worth 
me talking to. Absol oh, I so see he's, it was at that level. He says, yeah. this, guy, this guy is a real good poet. He's built on what I've done, pound thought. Mm -hmm. And so he says, I'll talk to him. So then he went and actually uh, showed up in public in 71, within a year, mm -hmm. and, and actually read some of his poetry at a public gathering, which he hadn't done in 10, 15 years or something. Thank you, Bucky Fuller. But th that sure. shows you yeah. the power of Bucky's vision. Yeah, yeah, he was that, powerful. Th that's a transition from the f modernist Radical modernist pound to the postmodern Bucky Fuller, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But I say McLuhan is paramodern. He comes after the postmodern. Okay. So let's get into the Secret Council yeah, of Ten. Yeah, Secret Council of so Ten. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Everybody at home, I would suggest that everybody sit down. Yes. And and be relaxed and everything. Cause you're maybe get into a yoga pose. You could maybe get into a you know deep breathing <laughs> or something uh, for uh, his rendition of um, the secret perceptual the secret council of, of ten. ten. <laughs> yes, tell us all about it. <laughs> okay, um, McLuhan said we must anticipate what the effects are going to be, and it's actually not that hard if you know how to look. So the effects. Of the, the hologram, of the hologram, which has, you know, someday we'll be able to project, you know, Harold will be project himself into we'll, my it'll, room. It'll end up hologram, yeah. probably, yeah. McClellan would say the, the, the effects of that new invention are already here. Because yeah. the effects precede the actual invention, yeah, which he right. called the causes. That's really funny. Uh, yeah. Looking glass time. Right. Yeah. Now, we and the Secret Council 10, which was formed after World War II, because obviously the Americans were going to set up the United Nations and become a global corporation. Rockefeller set up a hundred, uh, seven hundred corporations called the World Commerce Corporation, and that got the economy Which going. Rockefeller? Uh, Nelson and David. Nelson and David. Yeah. Okay, the Rockefellers. They, yeah, they set up and they got the economy going. Yeah. I mean, they babysat Germany and babysat uh, Japan yeah. for five or six, ten Marshall years. Marshall Plan helped. Yeah, Marshall Plan was the beginning of it. But the point is, it was a global village and becoming a global corporation. Yeah, he was the first one to coin that, I think. From Fuller, I mean McLuhan. Yeah, he got it from Wyndham Lewis. He did. Okay. Yeah. Who okay. was a big influence on James Joyce. Oh, I don't really? know if I've ever said that on your show before. No, I don't think big. that's a first. It's a first. Wyndham yeah. Lewis was a big influence on James Joyce. Okay. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Finney's Wake. here first, gang. Yeah. As a matter of fact, <laughs> Finney's Wake is an argument with Lewis. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Okay. Um, so, anyways, the. Um, but again, the secret. The secret council, council of, of ten. ten. So why ten? Why not five? So in the fifties, oh. the elites, the Fondi, the oligarch. Out of your the Bilderbergers? Yeah, that, that's a front for them. Yeah. Uh, the historical wealth of the last three, 300, 400 the years. Lundy. Lundy? What the Lundy? Fond the Fondy. Fondy, that's Fondy. it, that's right. They, the old money from yeah. Europe. Yeah. They saw that you didn't need to implement a world government technically, like mm -hmm. George Orwell feared, the mm -hmm. 1984 thing. It was already an environmental fact with television. Mm -hmm. But what was coming was the satellite environment, and they could see that. Mm -hmm. So actually, you're off the planet. So the Secret Council 10 said, well, we need to anticipate the effects of the satellite now environment. Now, wait a minute. Let's just underscore it again. The Secret Council 10 is in your, uh, they are people who run the world. They're people who sit on the former bureaucracy that ran the world before World War II. Okay. That's the 1984 world that Orwell describes is 1934. Three divisions, three part organized world, supposedly 1984, but that's the way it was in 1934. I heard it was 1948. That's when the book yeah, came out. Yeah, yeah, 1948, but that, um, Huxley's Brave New World is better dealing with the 60s and 70s than 1984, <coughs> which if you think of it as 1948, you see why it isn't, because he doesn't see the effects of television and decentralized TV. So we put him back in 1934. Here. We did a program a couple of weeks ago. The first person ever to be a newscaster yes, in you television. Berger? Yeah, yeah, wonderful yeah, guy. Beautiful yeah, guy. Yeah. He's really Chester lucid Berger. with it. And he was the first person to stand in front with a microphone and say, well, we'll bring you the news. And you know what they called him? Visualizers. He was because a visualizer. Visual. I thought that would be good for you. He's going to make visual because they got this thing where you got a picture. You could see. And, and nobody they, wanted to go near it. Everybody right. that was there of any consequence in communication were in radio, and they didn't want anything to do with this stupid television thing <laughs> coming along. But that was 46, my brother. Right. You're now, saying 48. Now, they note that the it. American Somebody projection. Knew, and if you were a secret council 10, you could know about it. You'd yeah. know about everything. <coughs> right? So they knew about it. The 
the American. Listen to this. Listen. Right. To this. The projection of him as a visualizer shows the eye bias of the American. Yeah, right. Because they had no way of seeing that television was tactile. Uh -huh. It's not just something you saw, or heard, and moved inside right. of. It was the interplay. Like we say you didn't have videotape until you know, and they, they, it was kinescope. It was movie. It was a movie. Right, right. You know what they were doing? They were take, and they couldn't do it because you got tw 30 frames a second for television, 24 for film. Yeah. So they did a thing, and they they cut out things, and then they could make a film of a television picture without the roll. And that was that's all we got yep. from the early records of television. Right. So the tactile McLuhan would have said, Mr. Berger, you're a tactilizer. But, <laughs> and he could have said that in forty six. I've never seen that term ever. Well, it comes from tactile. I know that, yep. but did you make it up? I yeah, mean, if, they, if he heard them say well, visualizer, would have he would have said, said tactilizer. But he didn't. He didn't. Not but he meant friend. that oh, I in his writings. You're it, interpreting now. Not no, no, he talked writing, about TV being tactile. Yeah, not, okay. He said it's not a visual medium. Yeah, but it's the use of the word. Everything's in yeah, an image, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. A tactilizer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a term. Do you, is it So the secret council of ten. Yes. Okay. So when we saw that, and I was just a young assistant or intern in the secret council of ten in the 50s. I mean, I grew up with my father and his network, all and right? And he was involved as a butler to the Fondi. To the Fondi, yeah. yeah. Very and involved. And that being the Fondi's old money Europe. Yeah, old yeah. Gutenberg class. Yeah. The class, yeah. the elite of the Gutenberg right. money system, Just which had collapsed in 29. Was there a connection between that Gutenberg, with that, that Fondi in terms of money terms and the aristocratic thing of the dynastic states and so forth? Turn in taxes. The family yeah. turned in taxes. They set up the postal system in uh -huh. 1500. That was a new medium. Mm -hmm. And so they gra developed great wealth um, uh, controlling the intelligence maneuvering around the postal system. Okay, I didn't mean to interrupt this. Council yeah, of Secret 10, Council of Ten. And they've been there for how? I mean, it, you're literally talking about ten individual people. Uh, yes. Not, no, it's about metaphor. forty people. About forty. And uh -huh. ten represented. There were ten representatives of four, so there are forty. Every four people had a representative. So there's ten fours, so you get a council of ten. You follow uh -huh. that? Uh -huh. So okay. ten members representing follow, forty I people. I can follow with the words <coughs> you said. I don't quite understand how the structure would have worked in reality. Well, if you have ten groups of four. Did they have elections, or how are they selected, or how is it done? No, it was passed down. It was passed, passed on. down. Yeah. Okay. I mean, to the popular mind, you could, you could think of it as the uh, the central bankers or the Illuminati, but it's not just the bankers. Uh -huh. It was the lawyers, because a because a trust fund, a fondu mm -hmm. or fondo singular. Mm -hmm is a legacy of, it's a bank account, mm -hmm. let's say, and the members that get to use it mm -hmm. are temporary, mm -hmm. and the bank account continues through the generations, mm -hmm. so that the members who use it, they can be off if they are, are rude with the way they do it or get out of hand, mm -hmm. they can be off, and the thing is the lawyers preserve the killed, bank account, killed, killed, be killed, off, yeah, yeah. Um, or poisoned. Has it been known to happen? Many times. Really? Yeah. Can okay, I, so yeah. The, um, the point is, is that the the nest egg of wealth uh -huh. carries on like a medium yeah, through right, the right, centuries. Yeah, right, right. All right. Okay. So, so in this, in this, but money became, that's the private ownership of money. In the 30s, money became public property. And that was the New Deal. That was fascism or socialism or communism where the average person was guaranteed money in, mm -hmm. in base, as a ticket to live. They didn't live in the country anymore. They lived in industrial cities. So they needed a piece of paper to function. Yeah. So everybody was given a piece of paper. So we call that the, the movement of money becoming public property. Mm -hmm. So that's in the 30s. Then it becomes credit after mm -hmm. World War II. Uh, 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 becoming, money becoming private property. Okay. Public property. Public property. Public okay. property. The welfare state. Okay. The welfare, yeah. state. The welfare, welfare state. state. Okay. In yeah. different political forms Remnants and different cultures. Remnants that hold in Europe now, I think, beyond whatever we've got. So after the uh, World War II, we start to move into a pre-digital. Pre-digital. But it's a computerized economy, and it's called the credit card, where people were given not a piece of paper, but a credit card. And if you kept that in order and your prestige uh, well balanced, you could function and you could operate in debt. Uh -huh. All right. So anyways, since money was not the controlling medium anymore in the 40s and 50s, information was. And anticipating the effects of new technologies, which were information landscapes, a technology brings in a whole new informative situation. It reinforms us, right? Information, inform. It reinforms us. The Secret Council of Ten, the only power they had and we had, was to anticipate the well, effects. You mean you're, you're, you're an association the with the secret power yeah, of ten yeah. yourself personally? I eventually was on it okay. in the 70s. 
but uh, what happened is I'm just working for it and aware of its maneuverings in the 50s and 60s. But the point is, is that it's not someone, it's not a group that is doing business. They're mm -hmm. monitoring the effects of new environments, new technology, to see what it does to their investments. All right, simple anticipation. All right. Anticipatory design science. Right. But very knowledgeable. Yeah. They, they had a good understanding. I would expect so. They probably had a lot of retainers that were pretty knowledgeable also. Without the retainers knowing it. They studied Finnegan's Wake and Ezra Pound and Elliot and Wyndham Lewis because they saw those poets were studying the effects of new media. So they yeah. learned techniques from them. Mm -hmm. My father used to read Finnegan's Wake before it was published, when yeah. it was in, in a serial form in Transition Magazine, and he would read it out to me. And eventually he called me Tim you Finnegan. Tim Finnegan? Tim Finnegan, yeah, Tim because Finnegan. Cause nice Finnegan's question. Wake is based on the ballad of Tim Finnegan. Uh, I didn't know. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, so we're so sitting... So you were raised on Finnegan's Wake? Yes, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I met James Joyce, Ezra Pound, T.S. Eli, when Most I met them all. I was young. And, and, and I even met Hitler. Lots. I even met Hitler. My father t took me to a meeting in October 1936. I didn't know the meaning of these people. Mm -hmm. I was uh, 14, but I, uh, I didn't fully know what they were all about. All I know is when I was in Hitler's uh, office, it was very cold, or some kind of psychic coldness, so people would say, well, you picked up the evil. Maybe that's what it was, but that's what I remember. It was a weirdly cold room. But anyways, the point is I met these people, but later, after World War II, I was drawn into it because the network of this oligarch was very tiny by that point. They'd been sitting on the sidelines from 1930 up to 1957. All through this welfare state. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Which collapses in the late 70s. Late 70s, coming yep. up to Reagan, with Thatcher? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. It collapses because the American wealthy lent out all their money around the world. It was called AID, aid, remember? Foreign yeah, aid. Yeah, but and I they built up a lot of countries in the, well, okay. in the 50s I never and 60s. I there was very much aid going out. No, there America. was basic uh, development yeah. of industry in the third world, eh, rudimentary level. Far ahead of us if you think of the basis. placid images the United Nations used to put out of, of our world in the 50s and 60s, that was caused by the American wealth mm -hmm. being distributed. But the problem was is that they lent it out. And when computer speeds in the late 70s had reached the speed of light or the speed of thought, mm -hmm. the whole money system collapsed and the loans could not be returned. So the Rockefellers were bankrupt. The oligarchy never lend money out. They only invest. And so they're not going to lose. So in the early 80s, the Fondi were brought in to recover. From Europe? Yeah, were yeah. brought in under the guise of uh, Prince Charles mm -hmm. and Lady Di. They were brought in to prop up the uh, virtual economy that comes in in 83 after the uh, Depression and the early Reagan era. Uh -huh. So, w so uh -huh. the Secret Council 10 is monitoring this situation all mm -hmm. the time. Okay? This, this, this is not one that usually comes up very often. You hear Illuminati, you hear Bilderberg, you hear you know, yeah. Trilateral, you hear da Davos, and that, but you don't hear Secret Council 10 except from the lips of uh, Bob Dobbs. Yeah, because they weren't called the Secret Council 10. What That's my term. Were, did they have any con? Did they have any no. They just had each other's phone number. Just a bunch of phone numbers. Were those numbers listed? No, 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 no. Listed. That they're, is, they're very secret. Just wondered, yeah. Yeah, okay, I yeah. mean, they could have conference calls. They get together sometimes, very informal. It's just like a, a group of mafia guys getting together. The commission, the mm -hmm. five mafia families, right? Would they, they get have been together. Seen as illegitimate in any of the no. so-called mm -hmm. legitimate no. chambers or no, any, because uh, judiciary, Interpol, or anything, or the, nothing like that. The Johnny Come Latelys, like the Rockefellers and, and the Rothschilds, they would encounter these people at a certain point in their own growth, and they would recognize, oh, they got their before us, mm -hmm. and so they would get along with them, mm -hmm. and everything was okay. Is anything comparable over on the Asian side of the planet? Yes, um, there is a name I refer to often mentioned uh, as Romanov, not the Romanov family that was set up the Tsarist regime in the 19th century. It's the same name, but no connection. Romanov is the controller of Asia. He's the one who brought in Gorbachev. Is or was? Yeah, it's not. So was now because nobody knows. Uh, nobody controls. See, what happened when I took over the Secret Council 10 in February 1988, we're talking about the Tom Dobbs scenario in the movie, Robin Williams' movie, Man of the Year. Oh, wait a minute, Tom Dobbs was a uh, television talk show. No, that's Lou Dobbs. No, Lou Dobbs is now another Dobbs, <laughs> but in the movie, Man of the Year, the protagonist... Tom Dobbs, that's what I'm quoting. Tom Dobbs I shifted was into that. not, he was a television... Y yeah. 
Right. I'm a television. Yeah. I could be closer to Bob, but you got the right name. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're right. It wasn't Tom Chatter. It, it wasn't Tom Chatter. It, it wasn't Bob Dodd. Tom Dodd. Like, yeah, and I've been on TV. I don't have the, the hassle like you have of making a show every day, mm. but I have the slack of showing up on TV whenever I want to. I know, to. because we got a lot of your stuff up on YouTube. It's going to be up next week. Yes, yeah. it's going to be up by the end About, of this week. We have probably. a total of uh, nine shows, including this one. This is the ninth? Yeah. You keep track of that better than I do. I, you know. Accounting, fun. Yeah. We, we keep yeah. uh, the chips on course. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so Tom Dobbs' scenario, Man of the Year, mm. uh, where he uses a computer accident glitch or maybe sympathy with the Android meme. Tom Dobbs' movie almost shows the Android meme supporting him. It makes him president, and he didn't even know he was going to be president. Yeah, okay? but, but well, that happened with me in 88. And when I became chairman of SQL Council 10, by 1990, I dismantled it because the Android meme was the main factor, and we didn't need to anticipate that anymore. It was on its own. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the Android meme, I'm telling you, is built from 60 to 90, and we in the SQL Council 10 nursed it and, and, and followed it and matured it and reacted to it and anticipated its effects. But then from 90 to 2000, the Android meme is over. It's dead. We have the after image. And what's sneaking up is what I call the AP, the anthropomorphic physical, the original body that all these media were extension of. The original body that these media were extensions I of. I heard the word, I, uh, yeah. the immediate body. Are you talking collectively humanity or are you talking... This, uh, this thing. Uh, uh, Whatever it's made up of. Is that coming to some sort of an end time or something? Or qualitative transformation, evolution of consciousness yes. or something? Yeah. Okay. This gets into your date, October 12th. October 12th, 1971. October 12th, 1970. 1970. Was James, uh, I mean, Sidney Dean, who was the founding father of quality access, that all happened about, uh, they all figured coalesced in a meaningful way for establishing a communication system that's going to be the major one in which new ideas are going to emerge. Right. Not a small matter. The design level is about 1970. Almost around October 12th, even. Well, I've not mm -hmm. got yeah, it you down You don't want to like go that, that far? No, yeah. you go with such precision. But no, but you do, too. 1970s, but I think... You, you go to Harold's website, you can read about October 12th, 1970. Mm. Yeah. It's, a it's a particularization of Bucky's vision, Bucky Fuller's vision. Fuller and... The yeah. age of scarcity is mm. over, you know, in Well, that, that, that's it, and that's something that never dares be said. Okay, so here we are in the 90s. And as the former technological environments, radio, no, we TV. Were, we were in the night. We're in the, it's 2007 uh, In my now, scenario. we got to get up to the modern. What's the uh, time? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, 22 I'll tell you, minutes. 18 we're, minutes. We're 20, 37 in. we got about 20 minutes okay, to go. Okay, right. To get it all wrapped up. We need up. to get to you the gotta present. you got to get to the present which and the haiku. You should start going into fast mode. Right, right. You're talking okay. too slow. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so in the 90s. That's a joke, son. I got it. Yeah. I got it. I'm, mm -hmm. My response is ironic. Mm -hmm. uh, rye. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, in the 90s, as the media really shrinks and mm. becomes paramedia, mm -hmm. the person has his little now iPhone, and before that the Palm Pilot, these small gadgets, he would feel bigger than these previous environments. When mm. radio came in, that was a huge effect. Gigantic. People, people were inside these things unconsciously. Mm -hmm. Hitler intimidated everybody with his rousing tribal meetings through the broadcast system and radio. Hot media. Think of, yeah, think of the cool, huge TV and satellite environments. These huge media environments that intimidated people in the 20th century and made them rather passive, you mm -hmm. could say. Now people are energized because the media is smaller than them. Mm -hmm. So I say this thing. Getting smaller. Getting smaller, disappearing. Yeah. Going down to the chip. So we, yeah, so we have Chip this. body we could talk and about. And all those big environments came from this body. Mm -hmm. Now they yeah, just. The, the technology is all an extension of our consciousness. Senses, our bodies. Or our percepts. Body parts and faculties. Body parts and Faculties, inner and outer. Yes, yeah. you want to call it consciousness, certainly, because yeah, okay, TV yeah. is an extension of the central nervous system or the tactile factor in the yeah, central nervous a, system. And a nervous system within the, uh, the satellite. Right, yeah. so these get tinier and tinier. Mm -hmm. The thing where all the media came from, where extended from, is sitting here, almost like a caveman again, mm -hmm. looking around. Back in, in touch with nature. Ba not necessarily, no. because you've got this second nature, this digital... Uh, multi-bodies, TV body and chip body, which are my terms for those landscapes as they get smaller. Yeah. They get attached to our original physical body, mm -hmm. and so we have a chip body and TV body. So when I look at you, Harold, I'm not just talking to a chemical body. I'm also looking at someone who's going to look at his cell phone or look at his uh, Can't iPhone. Can't make the cell phone work right. But yeah, but you're, 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 yeah. You're, yeah. Thousands, you're back from the mm. 20, 1950s. Yeah, but, yeah, but the yeah. point I is, when, but you do back. have yeah. a uh, computer and you get email. Yeah. And so I have to deal with your, your time and 
displacement of energy for your chip life mm -hmm. and for your TV life, like getting on this show and mm -hmm. producing the content. So I'm talking not just to the chemical body, but your TV body and your chip body. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing that with everybody. Mm -hmm. The juggling of that is mm -hmm. the new yoga, mm -hmm. which I call paramedia yoga. So as these things disappear and what they all came from has a bigger sense of superiority compared to all these previous media environments, mm -hmm. I call it the return of the anthropomorphic physical. Anthropomorphic Big physical. physical. The thing in us that makes us think that we're different from the environment, that we're unique. Not self-reflective consciousness. Yeah, right? that's, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. That definitely, that's I would it. say that sort of separates us from the rest of the creatures, I would think. Yeah. You know? And yeah. we're taking the measure of things in a very impressive way now. They're gonna have a telescope taking a picture of the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago within a nanosecond of its occurrence 13.7 billion years ago along about 2011. Yeah. That's a long time. That's really a measure of taking the measure of things, or capability. Well, the, the universe is shrinking and its godlike sources well, are shrinking. We're right here in front of us, a nanosecond away. So we got to move along. Yeah, so here we, are. Got a here we are. Here we are bigger, uh -huh. bigger than our well, media environment. You got your article. Okay. Yeah. You got so an article. Th is this bringing us up to date? Yeah. You've been going along Michael in a running Wolf. narrative. Michael, Michael Wolf, a Wolf. columnist That's somebody for worth paying attention to, right? At least for this article. Okay, for the wrote an article in the December issue of Vanity Fair. Mm -hmm. and September 2008? No, it's December 2007. Of course, yeah. 2007. And it's on page 176. It's called Generals, Gadgets, and Gorillas. The age of the media gadget is here with Apple steamrolling the big distributors. But when consumers have the power to get content anywhere, anytime for free, even Steve Jobs should be worried. So okay, e say that again, you're going to get all content for free. Uh, but when consumers have the power to get content anywhere, anytime for free, even Steve Jobs should be worried. Okay. Okay? Oh. It's the age of the media gadget. The gadget is the culture. Possibly it's just the age of the iPhone, iPod, iTV, iCar. But I don't think so. I think Steve Jobs and Apple are merely the sharpest promoters of gadgetism. The gadget as accessory is Steve's accomplishment. But fashion and status are only two aspects of the gadget world. At the most recent Allen and Company Media Mogul Conference in Sun Valley, big, it, comp, big gathering. Yeah. yeah, Paul Allen. It was important not just to have an iPhone, but to have been sent one by Steve Jobs himself, and then giving corporate ethics rules their due to mention you'd sent him back a personal check. The real point of the gadget, and a reason beyond fashion why people are so proud to display their gadgets, is that it sticks it to some larger, more cumbersome, less responsive media system. Uh -huh. The Android meme earlier, uh -huh. okay, decades uh -huh. ago, the big media environments. It allows us to stick Gives it. Gives you bragging rights. That's right. Uh -huh. Well, no, it allows the consumer to stick it to some larger, more cumbersome, less responsive media system. That's Shum exactly Peter? what... You're going to do Shum Peter? No, no, I'm talking about huge media environments. Yeah, I've just you, been describing it. I was trying it. to think of uh, economics and everything. You're we'll get to Peter. that. We'll get yeah. to that. A little gadget takes on the big networks, in brackets. So it's a minor irony that guys at the Allen & Company conference who own the networks, the big cumbersome yeah, systems, yeah. are gadget crazy. Right, yeah. They're actually involved in using instruments that knock out the big guys. A marketer would call this empowerment. As a consumer, you're getting the service you want at the time and place you want it more cheaply than you could ever have hoped to get it, as well as, often, critical help in stealing the particular service or tune. So it goes on to describe the effect and of media Napster, shrinking yeah. Yeah. and the consumer being bigger than media. Mm -hmm. And all we're going to get more and more is gadgets that allow us to steal and have everything so convenient for us that Google is going to try to topple Steve Jobs by offering everything for free. Everything. They're going to give it all away for free right. on a little all right. gadget. All right. All right. So let's relate that to the election. Mm. Okay. Here we the have election last night. held yesterday. The yes. primary election mm -hmm. for the presidency uh, uh, candidacy of the United States of America. I don't need my notes, but. You don't need your notes. But you just to uh, why don't you just try and show talk. that I did my homework. Why don't you just try and talk? You have such a hard time articulating. Why don't you just talk? I mean, okay. you know, you've got a thought or two. So you know. we've got these older media mm. systems, mm. and they're basically after images now because the real environment is this Paleolithic me bigger than my body. Paleolithic. Caveman. People. Back to well, nature is what you're yeah, kind of old thinking. Old Stone Age, yeah. Right, right. Uh, okay. And, yeah. and so in this age where no media system can dominate in its communication, I say that we're in a post-communication age. A post-communication age. And the president, the White House's image, always mirrors what's going on. Pretty okay. well the invisible environment is mirrored by the White House. 
Okay? okay. So we had a president the last seven years I know. who didn't communicate. Yeah. No, it didn't bother. Ah, didn't bother. Yeah. Indifferent. Because hmm. he was intuiting that we moved in the post-communication, post-information responding. Ahead of his time? No, responding to the present. Yeah, but was he ahead of his time in terms of that attitude, no attitude, no. Of leader he, or something? Or ahead, of everybody, ahead of the citizen, yes. Yeah, yeah. But in responding to the Secret Council of Ten and our maneuvers, it was the appropriate image for a post-communication situation, which post was... Post-communication. I mean, yeah. what, the need for any communication. The need what? for connecting with anybody. Bush never connected with anything. Well, Even to be disastrous, just, he wouldn't show up. That's not just NAS, NAS uh, what do you call it, N um, narcissism or something. I, I don't it's, kind of, it's a kind of narcissism, yeah. solipsism. Uh -huh, okay. But the point is, is that Y2K was the last gasp of the Android meme saying, we need to buy all these computers to protect us from the crash. Mm -hmm. And then Y2K came and nothing happened, mm -hmm. showing there was no Android meme. So where were we? We were in the 2000, we were into the retrieved Paleolithic grunting age, and so we had, we didn't even have an election properly communicated and efficiently uh, explained. Mm -hmm. It was aborted. You're it talking 2000? 2000, yeah, yes. something else. Wasn't right. It? So that's the beginning the of the non, Court. it was an election that didn't communicate to the people. Mm -hmm. It just by executive fiat said, this is what's happening. So where that's are we Paleolithic. now? This is 2008. Right. So here we are in 2008. And what's happened over the last seven years? More and more, the media has, the Android meme has allowed people to create their own content. That's YouTube. And I now am an editor, a broadcaster, a receiver, a transmitter. I'm everything that CBS used to be mm -hmm. or NBC. Mm -hmm. I am my own self. So that comes in in 2005, 2006. And what created that? The evolving YouTube? technology. Ca yeah. yeah. Came out of two uh, students at Stanford. Yeah. No, I didn't mean that way. I mean, just what was there in the, the natural. The oh, where is it heading? The, the, since the, we've only got a few minutes left, we want to get to some sort of projection. Right, here we come. So the Android meme. Uh, because it's shrinking and disappearing, it, the only way it can remain any kind of seductive influence is to give you everything, which I just read in that article. Google's going to give you, as an agent of the afternoon, abundance in a certain sense, abundance of interactivity, so that you feel you're in total control of your information. And that abundance too. of interactivity will relate back to the material world no, and the political no, organization. No, it'll be like quantum particles. That's, there's no materiality well, how there. How is that going to affect uh, the lives of citizens aboard spaceship or okay. in an ecological We're context. seeing it today in this election. Yeah. So when user-generated media, symbolized by MySpace, talk about solipsism, Face MySpace, Facebook, Facebook yeah. and YouTube. Yeah, it's amazing so many people sign on to those things, yeah. That's right. Well, it's a new form of Big Brother in the sense that all these kids sign on and then they're monitored. Mm -hmm. You know, if you but they don't care about their private chemical body identity, so it's not an issue. Yeah, you got that. It's not an part issue. Of the youth, they don't care yeah, the same way Mr. They, Bush because they, care. what they do care about is their TV and chip body. That's uh -huh. what they care about. They have to create their MySpace and they have to create their proper design. That's them more than what they're wearing uh -huh. or who they're relating to in their chemical body. So here we have this situation where we have the religious ritual of an American presidential election or yeah, election year. It now, it's a religious yeah. ritual based on the printing press. The United States is the only comp country, company, the only company in the world built on the printing press. Alone. Well, that's, that's what brought it in. Yeah, ben Franklin. Phonetic alphabet. Right. And the printing, the printing press. Printing press or phonetic alphabet? Well, it's phonetic linear. alphabet is the content. Yeah. The printing press mass produces. It's the yeah. first mass medium. Gutenberg Galaxy was right. a great So book. Ben Franklin brings in the American Revolution built on respecting each person's uh, opinion mm -hmm. and informed in nature in relation to a uh, print newspaper environment. Mm -hmm. That's the United States, 1780s and into the 1800s. We, every four years, replay that situation where the chemical body, the American chemical body, is honored by saying, your opinion accounts. Uh, explain once a quick a chemical body. What do you That's mean? That's what we call our physical body. That's what you call yeah. okay. But the Western model, well, we got seven minutes, right? Ten. Ten. Okay. The way we got lost time. The Western model, uh, Western science dominates the interpretation of this physical body, so that's chemistry over the last 150 years. The Western years. model dominates that on a board. Image yeah. of our physical body. Well, but in, in this power world, is that, uh, is that's uh, the, the, the dominant factor in terms of the geostrategic structuring of the planet? No, 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 no. It's a minor. We're juggling four bodies. The chemical body or physical body, 
the TV body, the chip body, and then the spiritual body or the astral body, which is just the religious impulse that there's more than this world. Okay, that's okay. going fast. So the kids juggle these. Most people won't understand. You know, there's four bodies and we're juggling them. Well, the, but most I, people will not understand. Yeah, it doesn't that, matter. They can see. tape this. It's Where on YouTube. But they'll be able to re-listen to this, Harold. Uh -huh. yeah, this is this is good. We can re-listen to this on the internet. That's true. Yeah. So we don't have to worry if they follow it, it under it immediately. It replay it and yeah. finally get it. You finally get it. <laughs> so here we, you have to have a collective expression of these four bodies in the media during an election. So what do you have? You have the anthropomorphic physical, the Paleolithic body demands its issues. What are they? Racial, gender, corporatist, political, and military. Those are things that came up in the campaign. That's right. So yeah. how do the candidates resonate with that? Mm -hmm. Obama, through his TV image, represents the racial issues in this election. Mm -hmm. Racial legacy, racial future, mm -hmm. okay? The gender issue represented by Hillary. I would suggest. Yeah. Now, those two images are more are in response to the TV landscape, all right? Mm. But we have a computer and chip body landscape. So, who would be a representative of the corporatist impulse? Corporatist How about Mr. Being, Romney? No, no, Mr. Bloomberg. Oh, Mr. Bloomberg. Well, the he's efficient not on man. the presidential. Oh, he's coming in. He's, he's not, coming in. Oh, you think as, he as is? As an independent, yeah. You think he is? Yeah, because the, the computer corporatist efficiency, remember corporatist was Mussolini's term for fascism. Mm -hmm. So Mussoli, uh, uh, Bloomberg represents the uh, efficient corporate manager. He built on... You think he's going to enter the presidential race? Oh, yeah. Oh, we got eight months. It's, it's all over. So we got to have a lot of more confusion and fascination. So anyways, follow this. So the, the issue of corporatism, the efficient management of all these big media conglomerates, mm -hmm. it will be represented by Bloomberg. Now, the Internet and the chip landscape, it flows around all this stuff. The blogosphere, I any individual can hook themselves up and pontificate and express and create videos and all this stuff. It's a, um, incredibly a democratic medium. Yeah. Anybody can do it. Yeah. So what is going to reflect that aspect of our election? The effect of the Internet on YouTube mm. and the autonomy and freedom that the users get from that. That's going to be Ron Paul. Ron Paul has been trying to show the irrelevance of the TV issues of Obama and Hillary. He's got a lot of popularity in the blog. Groundswell, sure. yeah, yeah, in the chip yeah. landscape, he has a lot of popularity. Be, and he's ignored in the debates. He's ignored by the TV landscape. Yeah. But the point is, is that he's there saying, we need to retrieve the Constitution, get rid of the Federal Reserve and the IRS, all these old Gutenberg mm -hmm. money environments. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that image, that, that topic, that content does not communicate. So he doesn't get much effect in the audience, in the general audience. I don't even know what he's talking about. But he's stressing the political. What is the rights of the individual today in a super democratic environment caused by the Internet? Mm -hmm. The old control by the um, Federal Reserve and the IRS, that should be diminished. Or by the whole infrastructure that kept people. If, if you the Electoral College. If so let me continue. I got that. Right. Okay, oh. you hold, the, let me just finish. The other important, the fifth part is the military, protecting our tribe and all that. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously McCain. Yeah. He represents the Pentagon. Right. But he doesn't represent the TV body, the computer body, or the Internet. He represents the future. Because future technologies come out of the Pentagon. It's due to they the funding. Have, they they know. always have. They're the ones working on the latest stuff in their black Although box the project. The amount, of, the amount of the gross domestic product given over to the military has decreased greatly. Uh, yeah, but then there's a the secret funding, the black box oh, project. Well, that's different. I don't know. Remember, about the that, day before September 11th, the military and the Pentagon announced they lost uh, $1.3 trillion. They, now, they, they could, wasn't accounted for? Yeah, they yeah, lost well, it. They've lost more than that in yeah, Iraq. It's up to 4.4. So you told me today they went over there with billions of dollars, $8 billion. Trillion, 4.4. And it was lost. Now, I want to tell no you, Harold, since it. we're coming into the deadline Yeah, here. we're coming to the deadline. Yeah. We'll get it right down. Count down yeah. five, four, three, no, five minutes. Yeah. Four so, and a half minutes. So is, fit it all in. So what happened? I disbanded the secret. This is the big punchline, an exclusive for punchline. you. Punchline. Punchline, ladies and gentlemen. I disbanded the Secret mm. Council 10 in late 80s by 1990. That must have been a very harrowing decision. No, it was logical. It was logical. So, okay. Spock but right. now, the world is a totally different place from, uh, what's that, 27, 28 years ago. It's now a new situation. So I've reconvened the Secret Council 10. You have. Called it yeah. back in session. Yeah. Right? We have quadrillions of dollars. Mm. If you want to call them dollars, mm -hmm. we have quadrillions, and we're orchestrating this situation, and we're going to bring in a new reality over the next 
five years. Five years. This is the, 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 by 2013? 2012. Look at the Mayan calendar. 2012? Frank Zappa's birthday, December 21st, 2012. Is that going to be it? Frank yeah, Zappa's birthday. That, Zappa that, that'll, Zappa that'll be locked trip, down man. Bob Rule. Yeah, okay. The, 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 okay. So we'll, which it sounds megalomaniac, but it's, it you know me. I'm not a megalomaniac. No, you're not. It sounds you're, absurd. What, what, so what, what's making the... This uh, possible? What, yeah. As the conflict between these different landscapes, yes. Hillary, I mean, Ron Paul, he's nowhere on the scene. He's going to form an independent party candidacy. He's going to regenerate himself. And you're interesting, you're going to have two independent parties. They may be negotiating right now, um, Bloomberg and Ron Paul, what they're going to do. Because you, you would have a split independent movement, two different candidates. But anyways, there's going to have to be a replay of the Ross Perot phenomenon or the Ralph Nader phenomenon. All right? So... As that unfolds over the next eight months, because pretty well... Oh, they, in this election cycle. Yeah, it's going to happen in the next eight months. This chaos is going to surface because the world economy is now realized to have been evaporated, okay? You know the Federal Reserve by 2011 is going to base its wealth not on its reserves, gold reserves. It's going to base it on nothing. This has been announced. Well, I, I don't quite understand. Oh, okay. You okay. know what that nothing is? Press conferences. Mm -hmm. Bernanke can come out and he can say, hmm, Wall Street having a little problem? We'll bring down the little Fed rate a little he bit. He just did a couple yeah. of times. And he also, of also yeah. infuses funds into Wall Street. Mm -hmm. And that's traditionally, constitutionally, not the Federal Reserve's function. They don't have any money. They're just a switching mechanism for the central bank networks, yeah, yeah. for the overnight rate and all that stuff. Yeah. So where do they get the money to, to put it in? To maneuver with interest rates. But yeah. they, they say they have the, the money. They say they gave it to Wall Street. No one can track this. And Wall Street goes up. But then it goes back down two days later. Then it goes back up. So where is it heading? You've got a date 2012 out yeah, there. And we've got an election. Who's I'm talking be, about this who's year. Who's going to be the president of the United States this time next year? I don't think there'll be one. You don't think there will be a... Yeah. Now, that's pretty uh, wild. Yeah, I think there will be a, uh, a uh, provisional government because there's going to be so much chaos. Is there going to be like a coup? A coup? No, 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 no. no. It uh, could be Ron Paul. He's the only one who represents the old values of a nation. Now, we can't have a nation in this global tactile environment. You can't have a nation. You can't have a world economy. You can't have one thing or another. It's all interplayed. It's, it's all, all paramedia. Seamless, it's it's all a, a seamless web. That's what the Vedics have been telling us for a long time, and yep. that is the truth. That's at the a fact. Certain level, and we got it all divided down and so forth. So there's a unity coming and everything. Is this a positive thing you see, a positive future, or is that good to put that it, kind of a term on it? Or no, it's the weather. About it's Sorry. the weather. The weather. I don't. Uh, do I have an opinion about the weather? I take it what it is. Yeah. And our media environments have come to this point that that's the weather we're going to experience. You can get to learn a lot about the weather. Well, let me. We got about a minute. Colors. Let me explain the global warming okay, we only problem. Got one minute. Yeah. Here's no, the, that's it. It's it down. Now. It, yeah. You see, the clock is ticking. Here it goes. Let me say uh, it. Say it. Global. Quick. It's say not it global quick. warming. It is due to technology taking over first nature, merging with it, that nature now is speeding up like technology is, and it does its four, its four seasons, the 12-month seasons, in three months. Mm -hmm. So if you have the summer happening in the winter, that's because it's sped over rapidly. The three-month cycle has happened within three months. The 12-month cycle happens in three months. Are you optimistic? So the mixture of the weather is not because the plant's getting hotter. It's because it's responding to the speed up we've imposed on it. Okay, well that's, that's the secret. Same. Are, are you optimistic, pessimistic for the human prospect? Well, I You've used to, got, you I used to be apocalyptic, apocalyptic, which meant neither uh, optimistic. What are you now in your, in your maturing years? I'm uh, in my bliss. In my bliss, yeah. are you? Okay, well, he's in his bliss, ladies and gentlemen. I hope we got all that down, and I hope you got it all there. And you can get a tape of this and replay it and replay it. You don't you even need a tape. It, it's on the Internet. Put it, you can put it on the Internet. You can yeah, put yeah. plugs put it in your iPhone. While you're sleeping. Take it to Asia you with take you. Take it all in. I hope you can get it all in. There's a whole lot of stuff he's put out there. Bob, thanks for coming in. <laughs> Thank you again, so Harold. It's interesting to go over this with you and to know we got 12, 12, I mean 2012 is the year to look for, and all these other kinds of things you did. And you've heard it here first, folks. Uh, Bob Dobbs, paramedia ecologist, and he's got a whole thing. And your site, I don't think we got your email, but fivebodied.com. Fivebodied.com. F i v e b o d i e d dot com. F i v b o d. F i v. Yeah. B o d i e d. dot com. Yeah, you said it with a Canadian accent. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's about.